Hi guys, um, so today's lesson is going to be poetry. Okay, so the word that you can see on the board now, not the board because you're not at school, you're at home. The word that you can see on the screen now says warning. So the first thing I want you to do as a little starter activity is to write down as many connotations as you can for the word warning. Um, so for anybody that isn't sure on what a connotation is, it's anything that that word makes you think of, anything that you associate with the word warning, just write down anything that comes to mind. So go ahead and pause the video and that's your first task. Brill. So I'm going to assume that you've done that. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is introduce the poem that we're going to be working on today. So the title of the poem is, drumroll, Warning. So I want you to just take a couple of seconds now and have a look at the words that you've written down for the first task and just have a think to yourself on what you think this poem is going to be about. Just get an idea in your head of your expectations, what you think this poem is going to entail. Okay? So this is the poem. It's called Warning. It's by Jenny Joseph. What I'm going to do is I'm going to read it out to you. Um, and then obviously you've got this YouTube video, so you can keep going back to this. Um, so yeah, here we go. When I am an old woman, I shall wear purple with a red hat, which doesn't go and doesn't suit me. And I shall spend my pension on brandy and summer gloves and satin sandals and say we've no money for butter. I shall sit down on the pavement when I'm tired and gobble up samples in shops and press alarm bells and run my stick along the public railings and make up for the sobriety of my youth. I shall go out in my slippers in the rain and pick flowers in other people's gardens and learn to spit. You can wear terrible shirts and grow more fat and eat three pounds of sausages at a go or only bread and pickle for a week and hoard pens and pencils and beer mats and things in boxes. But now we must have clothes that keep us dry and pay our rent and not swear in the street and set a good example for the children. We must have friends to dinner and read the papers. But maybe I ought to practice a little now. So people who know me are not too shocked and surprised when suddenly I am old and start to wear purple. So that's the poem. Um, I want you to think about the expectation that you had before I read it and before you saw it and ask yourself if you're surprised. Um, did you think it was going to be about something different? Is it what you expected? Okay, so we're going to have a quick look at how we analyse poetry. So a really good way of analysing poetry is something that we call clips, which is content, language, imagery, personal response, structure. If you can think about all of these things in depth for every poem that we look at, you're on to a winner. Okay, so content is looking at what the poem is about. Language, how does the writer want the reader to respond? Is the poem happy, sad, sarcastic, angry, and how do we know that? Does the tone of the poem change at all, and if so, why? Imagery, so does the writer use similes, metaphors in order to paint a particular picture in the reader's mind? And then what effect does that have? Um, personal response, so how does the poem make you personally feel? Everybody will have their own reaction to poetry. Um, what will make one person feel sad might make another feel happy, and that's absolutely fine. There's no right or wrong way to feel about a poem. Um, and then think about how does the writer want the reader to think and understand what is the point of the poem and what message is the writer trying to convey um, and then you've got structure so is the poem written in first person third person why what's the effect of this does the beginning contrast to the end why why not so these are all bits that you can be thinking about when you read poetry so we're going to have a go quick go together at some bits for clips and then your task which I've already spoken to you about um, is to sort of have a go on your own okay so the first one then content so what is the poem about well the first line when I am an old woman so we know already that this is being written 
by a young woman maybe and someone who is looking into the future and what that's going to look like. Um, language, so we move on to language next. So this uh, here, oh this is awful guys, I'm sorry, this is the first time I've ever used this pen and technology is not my friend today anyway, so I apologise. Um, but what I'm doing is I'm circling all the words that say and. Why am I doing that, you ask? So it's repetition. So the poet has used repetition here um, to sort of emphasise the fact that this is a list. So her intent is to write... Oh dear. Write a list of things that she is going to do when she is an old woman. And the repetition of and I shall, and, 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 sort of emphasises that fact that she is just literally reeling off the things that she wants to do when she is older. Um, move on to imagery. So, purple. Why has the poet chosen that colour? Purple is often sort of seen as a quite garish and loud colour. Um, so that could be symbolic of the rebellion. If you can't read this, guys, I do apologise, but I'm doing the best I can. <laughs> um, and if we move down here, this is interesting. So satin sandals. So I don't know if you've come across this yet. Um, if not, this is a really good time to introduce it to you. So the repetition of that, like the hissing sound of the S is called sibilance. And what that does is it makes it sort of stick out to you as you read it. And it creates this image in your mind of these satin sandals. So that is a type of imagery. This is going to get really messy really quickly, guys. I do apologise. I'm trying... Oh, no, it's not going well. Um, sibilance. So the repetition of the S sound gives that imagery. Um, personal response. I, I'm not going to do that bit for you because I want you to have your own opinion on this. I want you to think about how it's made you feel and what you think about it. How do you think that the writer feels? Um, and what do you think that they are trying to get across to the person reading it. So that's one for you. Um, structure. So in terms of the entire thing, it's free verse. And I don't know if you noticed as I was reading it, but there's not actually any sort of rhyming scheme. So I think a lot of people get hung up on the fact that poetry has to rhyme and the ends of the lines all have to rhyme. Um, and that's not the case at all. So this one doesn't have a rhyming scheme. I'm going to, I've sort of given that to you, but I want you to think a little bit deeper about that. So why is that? Why has Jenny Joseph chosen to do this free verse? Why has she chosen not to have a particular rhyming scheme? What does that tell us about the poem in general and the way that she wanted it to come across? Um... So yeah, that's that's your lot. That's all I'm going to go through for now. Um, we can go into this in a little bit more detail next lesson. But what I want you to do now is open up your Word document. You'll, you've got a copy of this poem.